Sure, in some ways the open source ethos is, is someone like the golden rule, right? Like do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's kind of the open source way, right? It's like give others the freedoms that you want to have for yourself. And the GPL in specific, in particular, sort of ensures that any derivatives of your code, anything that is built on top of your code, also ensures those same freedoms. You can't take my GPL code and then create something new that doesn't provide the same freedoms to people. And that is very, very important. That's the thing that people forget is some people say GPL is a restrictive license because it restricts the freedoms of the developer, but it doesn't really. It's protecting the freedoms of the user. So it's saying that you can't take away the things that the user holds and dear and is important to them. And that's restrictive to the developer only in the sense that it's stopping them from doing something bad. Wikipedia is a great example of the open source methodology applied to information, right? Creating a repository of the rules of information. I think there's areas of the world which need open source. For example, our voting systems. In a democracy, or even a democratic republic, or whatever it is, you can't vote in a black box, right? There needs to be some sort of accountability, and ideally, a completely transparent process for how everything works. All of those types of things are places where open source is changing the world in some ways. And I think fundamentally what it is is that now that more people are experiencing open source, and Firefox and WordPress and things like that, you get a taste of that freedom. And once you've had a taste of that freedom, it's hard to return to your previous state. And so I like that on the server side, we've had this for a long time, but on the consumer side, more and more people are experiencing the freedom. In economics, we used to have the idea of externalized cost, right? And to me, a lot of the problems in the environment are the fact that the cost of pollution are being externalized across the world and our children and grandchildren. So the people who are affecting these costs aren't being directly impacted by them. And by the time the impacts are around, they'll be gone. Um, and that's, that sort of incentive system is not healthy. And it creates things like we're doing today. Um, in general, I'd say my philosophy there is just that, you know, when you go camping, you're supposed to leave the campground better than when you found it. You know, leave nothing but footprints, take nothing but pictures. That type of philosophy of interacting with the environment. Obviously, humans are dramatically transformative of any environment they occupy. And so we need to be particularly mindful of, of the long-term effects of that transformation. And I hope, I hope that technology allows us to have a win-win. We can think of ways to be more efficient with energy and driving. So, you know, I don't want to stop driving. I like my car. I like driving around. But, you know, so does everyone else in the world. And together, we're creating a problem. But hopefully, this is something that technology can make better. So we can still have the wonders of modern transportation without having such a negative impact. And I guess, at the core, I'm a big believer in technology, though. Just that the pace of innovation, the human mind can create amazing things. And we are now starting to focus that attention on these problems.